circumstances belong to God. God turned all circumstances to joy, joy, joy. So we honor God this morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We give your name glory this morning because you're such a wonderful, good God. You're such an all-keeping God. You're such an all-watching God. You say in your word, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So this morning, Father God, we give your name the glory. We give your name the no honor for being great, 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 great to this family this morning, great to the grieving family this morning. Great are you, great are you, great God. Your joy is enough for this family, Father God. You said in your word that my joy, the joy of the Lord, is my strength. And it is my strength this morning, God. It is the strength we pray for this family this morning, Father God. And we thank you that your strength is enough. participate in the program, Father God. And oh God, we ask for special blessings, special anointing, God, special strength, God, for the family in the name of Jesus. And yes, God, we will give your name the glory. We will give your name the praise, God, for empowering us, strengthening us, and giving us what we need right now in the name of Jesus. And now, God, we thank you. We thank you. And we surrender this all to you this morning, this program. These people, Father. King James Version. 
I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respect not the proud, nor such as may as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. My ears have thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering as thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come, and the volume of the book is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid my righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not Conceal thy lo loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. May God bless the reading of the word, his word to his people. Thank you. Honest to God, it's written, therefore it's so. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of the heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, now there should be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It's done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idol, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burn with fire and brimstone which is in the second death. After there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, come and hither, I will shew thee the bride, the lamb's wife. 
and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me a great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 We honor God for his word that has been read from our first, I mean from the um, Old Testament as well as the New Testament. As we proceed on with our program this morning, I want to offer some, uh, just a few words here. Um, there is an order, there is an order to every program. Um, an order is good, but sometimes too much order can cause you to miss the moment. Today, the moment is, we are here to celebrate decently and in order. Yes. A husband, a father, yeah. a brother, an uncle, a best friend, who lived a life of order and happiness. That's our moment yes. for this morning. We have, we have come to celebrate joyfully, joyfully, the life of Master Sergeant, um, <coughs> excuse me, Norman B. Hall. That is what we've come, uh, why we are here this morning. And so I want us to celebrate that. But as we celebrate, I want us to remember the family. I want us to remember Mrs. Hall especially. I want us to love on her and encourage her and comfort her uh, with our words that we're going uh, to say today. As when God uh, affords us an opportunity to come in a service, um, a transition service, a funeral service. There will be tears shed, and that's good, because sometimes grief causes you to shed sad tears. But God is the God of joy, and he replaces your sad tears for joy tears. So feel free to, to, to worship and to cry in sadness, but just knowing that the joy of the Lord is our strength, and he's going to turn your joy, your, your, your mourning into joy. So God bless you on this morning um, as we celebrate Master Sergeant Norma Hall. We bless God and we thank God for it. We are on a time restraint this morning. I want us to be reminded of that uh, when you come and give your words uh, for our uh, celebrant on this morning. And next, we are going to have a, uh, a, comfort, a hymn of comfort, Amazing Grace, by Robbie ben Benjamin. After that, we're going to read their obituary silently. I 
was really the end of everything. And you feel like that. But he really isn't. Because the Lord shared with me, when something dies, something new grows. Oh, yeah. Something new grows. And when I was reading the word of God this morning, and I was over in Joshua chapter 1, and the Bible said, after, after Moses passed, after Moses died, after, then God called forth Joshua. So right now you're in the moment, but after, after, it's going to be something new coming, something beautiful. I won't say more beautiful than what you had with your husband. I won't say that, but God have you now. He's holding you. You may not feel like it, but he have you. He have you, you personally wrapped up in him at this moment. And so be encouraged in the Lord and to his brother, his sister, sisters. Uh, I want to say to you, sisters in love, God have you. God have you. Um, I, I don't know much about your relationship, Judge, you and Norman, but I know he and I'm a Jean, we're pretty tight. So I want Amajin to know I am praying for her. And I think at this moment, that's all Amajin needs. That's all you need, Mrs. Hall. That's all you need, Judge. That's all you need, Ozzy. You just need the prayers of the righteous. We are praying for you. We're not, we didn't just show up today to show up, but we showed up to be with you. We showed up to let you know how much we love you as well. So God bless you, family, as you grieve your loved one today. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy, Mrs. Hall to cry, to scream, whatever you want to do. Because remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. God bless you. And at this time, I think we're calling for a solo from Mr. Justin Hall. The Lord, everybody. Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Um, that's one of my first times sitting in the room for the family. Um, but I want to let you guys know that no matter what storm you may be going through at this moment, that you are safe in the arms of Jesus. Be 
because, because the Lord is my shepherd.
about the best. So when you talk about Master Sergeant Hall, you need to know this. I'm sort of angry about it. Mom has over 2,500 flying hours. C5As, 141, C130s, and C12 aircraft. Uh, that's a lot of fun. And he did that for 17 years. Mom also had over 500,000 miles driving. 10 ton factory fare, vans, sedans, any type of vehicle but the moving material, you take any means of transportation that you can get with this material. And when I talk, when I talk about this automated cargo, we're talking about top secret stuff. This is what uh, makes the most sensitive classified material that we're working on. The longer did that for 17 years. And one other thing you need to know, you look at the ribbons on his chest. Mom has two defense military service men. Everybody don't get them. They just don't give those away. He's got two of them. He also has three joint service accommodation models. Anything that's joint service, that's all the branches of the service together. Everybody don't get those either. It's all the next three of them. I know so much about Mom. He's 24 years in the military, and I've worked together for 17 years. So, just about every mission, just about every country, we all showed up in the same place, even at the same time, or within a couple days of each other. So, we spent a lot of time together. So, Keisha, even though you know I'm ambush, you know, does he know? I would love to do anything in the world. I do anything for him. I do anything for this country. But one of the things I hate to do is public speaking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> your family, the Hall family, I'm very proud of you. We serve this country with honor to be represented by family. Great at all times. I don't care where we were in the world. No, for the name of my name. Mom and I had a way of communicating with each other without talking. I could look at his face, like the baby said. Instead, I knew the mom was at his end. I knew the mom was ready to roll up. I knew it was time for us to do it. So, thank you for your time, Keisha. On behalf of Betty and I, we have our people's condolences. You know, we love you. We love mom. Anything from whatever you need from us. South Carolina is not that far away. I hope I proved that to you. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is call and I promise you will be here. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your
in heaven. Prepared for me when the toils of this life is over. Before the throne, singing praises forever, forevermore, and in my father's house. There are mansions bright. If he said it, I know this is true. Yeah, Lord, there's a place for me around God's throne. Brothers and sisters, there is one, he's got one for you. Jesus promised me a whole over there. He, the Lord, promised for me a whole. But you told us who Norman was. I didn't know that. When I looked over at his flag, I just thought service. And I told God, thank you. But it was more than his record and his service to our country protecting us was more than just a flag. So I know him and I thank God for that. So God bless you, Sister Keisha, and, 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 the, and the, for the time that your husband served. And all those awards that he got. So we tell God thank you. But now, here we are. 
down to the best. We're down to the best. We're here to hear the word of God. We're here to hear the word of God. We've heard some good things. We've heard some good singing. And oh my God, uh, we thank God for that. But God's word is greater than anything we could ever hear. Anything that could ever entertain us is the word of God. And at this time, our eulogist for today, Bishop Frank Tull, is coming to bless us. And I uh, want to encourage you. I have my heart ready. I got my mind set. I got my pen ready because I want to hear what God is saying at the celebration for Norman Hall. God bless you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Give an honor to God. And my wife, in her absence, she really wanted to be here to give you a hug and tell you how much she loves you. But she had something that she just could not get out of. Can y'all hear me okay? Amen. 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 You know what? I'm going to ask you this morning, if you would, uh, we don't have a lot of time because we're under a time constraint, but I'm going to ask you to really plug in for this moment. Be in this moment. Be here with me right now. And let's hear what God has to say for you right now in this situation. Don't think about how long the line is at Luby's. Come on, somebody. Right? Am I right about it? Come on, now. don't be thinking to yourself, you know, about your afternoon nap. And for those of you over 50, you know how good that can be. Especially about 1 o'clock. That 1 o'clock nap is powerful. Amen. But this morning, I want to share a word that God gave me. Uh, one o'clock this morning. Uh, I was doing some traveling and, and sis had trouble getting in touch with me so she had, I had to catch me at the last minute and I just cleared my schedule. I got a wedding here I'm going to right after this that I'm doing. So it's a very busy weekend but for Brother Norman and Sister Keisha I said without a doubt I'll be there. Amen. So for all the family, all the friends, uh, co-workers, master sergeants in the house, Amen. I feel like I need to stand up straight. <laughs> Amen. All the people who are here who came, I just want to say on behalf of the family, welcome. Welcome. And uh, like I said, we, we really, I mean, literally only have about 15 minutes, so I'm going to have to get into it. But I'd be remiss if I didn't do something very, very important and say thank you to the guy who turned on the air conditioning. Come on, somebody. <laughs> oh, that man, he heard from God. He, come on now, yeah, you, you can't look good and be hot. No, we in here trying to look good. But one thing that, uh, there, there are a couple of things that came to me when Sister Keisha called me. I said, uh, you know, what, what, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? And those of you who knew Brother Norman knew there's three things. There's a lot to him. He, he's like an onion, a lot of pieces that you could, uh, layers that you could roll back. But one thing is he loved to dress. Am I right? Look at that picture. You can't, but come on, somebody. He loved to dress, and he looked good in a suit. He did. He loved to dress. He loved the Lord. He loved to go to church. But most of all, he loved to eat. <laughs> oh, man, he loved to eat. So when, when the Lord reminded me of how he looked when he would talk about food, and like he was talking about a girlfriend. He was, oh, man, that chicken. Oh, that mac and cheese, man. It's got three layers. Come on, somebody. I started thinking about it. I said, the Lord brought it to me real quick. He said, you got to go to Psalms 34 and 8. Oh, taste and see right. that the Lord is good. <laughs> For blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Yeah. Okay. Now, we got some theologians in the house who, they're, they're going to be mad at me if I don't tell you exactly what the scripture's about. But what I believe is after I tell you that, I got to bring the word down from 30,000 feet and put it in your lap. So you understand it. See, it's one thing to use big words. I'm going to be impressed by your big words. But if I don't understand what you're saying, I'm not going to be changed. See, the Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If I don't know what you're talking about, I can't be renewed. All right? So the, the thing about Psalm 34 and 8 is it says that it's about relationship with God. It's about exposure. And then it's about knowledge. And in a minute, you're going to see where I'm going. It's an invitation to take God at his word, to trust in the Lord, to experience his goodness firsthand. That's relationship. See, that, that word taste, some people just read it and go over it, but taste means to experience. Right. 
When you taste something, you experience it. Your taste buds experience what it's like. And, and there's some stuff that's good and there's some stuff that's bad, but there's some stuff that you need to eat because it's good for you. Come on, somebody. And I'm preaching better than you saying amen. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this psalm says, come on in and get to know God at a different level. So now let's take that scripture and let, let's bring it down to our level. So what, what, oh, taste and see. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. In, in the case of Brother Norman, one thing he would do is he would eat the food that he liked as a child and also the food that was before him right now. See, he, he liked the things of the past, and he knew how to enjoy the things of right now. Right. What I'm saying to you today is God has given you another day on this earth. Right. Enjoy right. the things of today. Right. And, and, and you know what? There's some stuff from your past that you need to go back and grab that friend from high school. You need to go back and grab aunt such and such who used to babysit you. You, you need to go back and, and start moving from things that were good memories and recap those memories. Brother Norman is saying, let's taste and see life and find out that it's good. Let, let's taste and see. You got neighbors across the street you don't know. You pulling in your garage all fast and letting the door down because you don't want to talk to nobody. <laughs> You, you know they waving at you and you pretending like you're looking at the mail. You don't want to. Oh, taste and see. You don't know who that friend could be. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. We just had a, a couple friends of mine call me and they said, uh, Bishop, let's get together. Man, we saw you on the internet and, and we're so proud of you. We want to get together. Let's meet over here. And it was on a Saturday. Now, Saturday, like I said, it's a busy, busy day for me. Funerals and weddings and and uh, baby dedications and everything is so busy. But you know what I told my wife? I said, I'm going to go. Okay. I'm going to go. And it was like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Not even a good time. They could have made it early at 8 in the middle of the day. I said, I'm going to go on and go. And I went. And, and uh, man, there was guys that I hadn't seen since high school. Now, I ain't going to lie. I didn't recognize some of them. <laughs> who, who, who are you again? Who are you? I mean, no hair. I said, who are you? Right? But I got to hug on them, and we got to catch up, and I said, man, that was good. Oh, taste and see. Life is good. If you caught up in your depression, and you caught up in this is heavy, and that's heavy, and you don't know what it's like to be 15. Oh, my God, it's so hard. No, it's a blessing to be 15. It's a blessing to be 20. It's a blessing to, you know the majority of the people committing suicide are under 25? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, how many people would go right on back to 25 if you could? Yeah. Ooh, wee. Man, I'd get on that 25 bus in a minute. <laughs> where, 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 where'd I get on and go back to 25? I, yes, sir. I'd go back to 35. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, taste and see. Then, Brother Norman, he didn't just like what he used to like, the old stuff from when he was young, or the stuff he liked now. He would try new foods. He loved to try new foods. Let's apply that to our lives. Let's try something new. Some of y'all from Dallas, from Fort Worth, you live in Dallas, you ain't never been to Fort Worth. <laughs> it ain't but an hour up the road. You, you live in Fort Worth, you ain't never been to Dallas. Oh, taste and see. You don't know what God has for you. Start traveling. Go some places. Enjoy life. You ain't got to be home when Jeopardy come on every day. You can miss one day of Jeopardy. You're going to be all right. You can record it. But Bishop Steve Harvey come on right after Jeopardy. I got to be there. Steve's going to be just fine without you. Oh, taste and see. I, I want you to, when you leave out of here, I want you to make a list of stuff you're going to do you haven't done. Go, go to the neighbor across the street and say, how you doing? My name is such and such. But Bishop, what if they refuse me? See, the thing about God is he doesn't judge you based on how they respond. He judges you based on what you do. So when they act a fool or they don't receive you, you just say, glory to God. What Jesus said, shake the dust off your feet. And you walk right on back to your house and, and walk back with your head up. Don't put your head, oh, they denied me. No, uh-uh. No, that's their loss. 
they don't know what they're missing out on because they don't know you. And that's the other thing. When you get into something, make sure you bring the joy of the Lord. What do people get when they get you? What do people expect when they see your name on the list? Do they say, oh, praise the Lord, such, sister such and such is going to be there. Oh, she's so there. Or do they say, Lord, give me strength. But the weight can be heavy. And brother such and such is coming. What, what do people know what, what, what they're going to get when they get you? The, the master sergeant who came up here and spoke, I don't even know him. I can tell you what it's like to be with him. I can tell you right now, you know, now he's structured and he don't take no mess. He don't take no mess. And because you've been in the military, he probably kill you 12 ways and you won't even know you're dead. But he's a good friend. He's loyal. And he's going to be there when you need him. What do people say about you? Can folk count on you? You know, Sister Keisha pretended and everything. Oh, Bishop, I'm so glad you said you'd come. She knew I was going to come. <laughs> she knew it. That's why she called me. She knew. And then, you know, she ain't fair. She don't play fair. Brother Norman, I think it was his last request. <laughs> for you to be there, Bishop. But, you know, you can't make it. So I got to go to heaven and tell Brother Norman I was busy. <laughs> oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God is the one who gives us life, and he gave it to you for a reason. The breath in your lungs is for not to gossip with, it not to go on Facebook and break folks down. No, you, you're here today to uplift somebody, to tell them about the joy of the Lord, to let them know God kept you one more day. Since we got a parent's son, what was her name? What was your name, sir? Shirley. Shirley. Sister Shirley. Woo-wee. Yeah, yeah. Confidence. Yeah. She didn't hesitate. She went around that pole and told him, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> doing it like that him <laughs> and sang from her heart and to everybody on the program thank you so much for what you did today for y'all who came you could have easily stayed at home and you know brother Norman knows my heart you could have done that but you got out of bed you got dressed and you came you sowed a seed today Amen. So as I close, because my man told me at 12.15, they're going to do us like the club. They're going to flick the lights. <laughs> Number three is to trust and believe in God. Yeah. Don't put your faith in man. Man will let you down. But God is not a man that he would lie. Amen. So if God said it, it's so. Oh, taste and see that if you believe in God, it's going to be good. If you put your faith in God, it's going to be good. If you put everything you got into loving God, it's going to be good. Oh, taste and see. I'm asking y'all, please, don't leave here and let this word just run off your back. No, no, no. Take this right here and say, I'm going to do different. I'm going to live different. I'm going to make new friends. You had the same two friends for the last 20 years, and one of them ain't really your friend. Go make you some new friends. Be a friend. Stop walking around with your head down. Say hello to people. How you doing? This is Texas. You can say hello. We in New York. I said, don't do that. But this is Texas. You can say hello. You can shake hands with folks. You love on people. And the people who are in your life, they're not going to be here forever. Right now, you can think to yourself, the last time you saw Brother Norman, I'm just so thankful as his pastor. I know he's in glory. I know he's with the Father. I know he's in, I know it. I know it. I'm not wondering because I took him through the prayer. I know he gave his life to God. I know it. I know it. I want each and every one of you to be there. If there's anybody here today who has not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, raise your hand. If you have not, I, I, I'm, I'm no, ain't no shame in my game. Uh, I'll get you saved right here, right now. Wash you up, make it clean right here. I told God, I'll catch him. You clean him. Come on now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I, like I said, we don't have much time. I pray y'all were blessed by this.
Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. You said in uh, Romans 12 and, and 15 to mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice. And so, Lord, we just, we, we mourn today, but we rejoice the goodness. We rejoice today in the blessing of Brother Norman's life, the time that you, you gave us with him. We thank you, Father. Lord, just open our minds so that we might hear. Open our eyes so we might see. I thank you, Lord. Open our ears so that we hear your voice above all other. Lord, bless us today as we travel, as we go home. Thank you so much for this service. And Lord, we lift up Monday as Brother Norman is placed in the ground. We thank you for the blessing of the Lord to be upon it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.